public parks, stormwater, microcells, and rooftop dining in Wayne. Those are the headlines for this episode of Commissioner's Corner, a regular feature that is produced by Radnor Studio 21 about local government and the issues that affect the quality of life for residents in Radnor Township. With me today is 6th Ward Commissioner Jake Abel. Uh, thank you, Jake, for taking the time. Glad to be back. I, I know you, with your newsletter and other public meetings you have, you you really extend yourself and try to get information out to the public, particularly those in the 6th Ward, uh, about issues that do affect uh, the quality of life, but also affect our pocketbooks, because all of these initiatives cost money, Sure. and everything is costing more these days. Let's begin with public parks. I, I know in the 6th Ward particularly, there's been a great deal of activity, all in an effort to upgrade most of the public parks in the area. Right, so um, the previous board had passed um, park improvements for two parks in particular in, uh, in, in the 6th Ward, Bill Connor and Warren Philippone. Those two parks are under construction right now. Um, you know, I, I know everybody wants improvement, yes. but then when it's underway, there's some angst. You know, when are we getting our parks back? I mean, I'm happy to announce that uh, Bo Connor Park, you know, we weather pending, should be reopened hopefully by the end of next week. Uh, and then Warren Philippone will follow, again, weather pending by mm -hmm. the end of October. Uh, I've done two tours of the parks. Uh, they're doing great work. Uh, I think the residents are going to be really pleased. Um, you know, they've asked for some some things. They've asked for uh, pickleball. Um, that that court is being worked on right now, and it'll mm -hmm. be done. So we'll have more people enjoying the parks, playing different sports. Basketball courts are being redone. Baseball fencing is being redone. Tennis courts are being re resurfaced. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to look really nice. Do those uh, parks have uh, lighting for nighttime activity? Uh, they do not. They do not. No. Okay. No. So park park hours. Yes. Dusk, dusk to dawn. That's what I thought. I, I can't. Uh, we can't talk about parks without my asking about the Willows. Uh, anything new on the Willows Mansion? No. At the last meeting, we passed. Uh, we passed a, a resolution. Um, was there an amendment of some type to the lease again? Well, the amendment to the lease was a couple of meetings back. I was not that at was that the meeting. Extension of. But the, I think yeah. that was tabled. Uh, so last meeting, we we proposed. Uh, we. we uh, provided some funding to do some, some, uh, I guess, some video cameraing of, of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, you know, in, in full, in, to be candid, I voted against that um, again. I voted against the lease because I didn't think the benchmarks were in place to protect the residents. So I'd like to see the funding, the, the Willows Park Preserve, be able to raise the money before the township starts I, spending the 1.7 million. You know my bias. I totally agree with you. Uh, I, uh, however, and I am conflicted. Once again, as I've said before, I, I have all the respect in the world for the people who are on that board and, and have, how hard they've worked, how difficult it is, and how difficult it's going to be to raise money. Right. Uh, but I, I just continue to think it's a bad investment. And I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat where I, I support the project. I want to see the project succeed. Yes. But I think we need to also, I also want to protect the residents and protect yeah. the, you know, the residents' it's, interests. It's got to be run like a business because now they've made it a business. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Stormwater, it's, it's, it's on everybody's mind. It has been particularly with the kind of uh, summer we've had. Yeah. Well, what's the latest? Well, I've had, I've had a couple of meetings with the township um, and, and with um, you know, the, the folks interested in this uh, project. Um, the West Wayne Preserve is, is close to being before the board. Um, I, I've seen um, the proposal. I, I support the proposal. And it's just, you know, it's basically regrading the West Wayne Preserve mm -hmm. um, so it, it um, holds water better. And then using the Friends of Radnor Trail also to hold water. And, and the reason I like this project is because we're using township property. So we're not having to yeah. go out to residents, take back, you know, ask them to, you know, to take over yeah. some of their, their property. We're using our own property. Well, will these projects fix the problem or c completely remediate it, or will it simply lessen the severity of the problem? So that's, a, that's an, it's an important point. Yeah. Um, this is stormwater management. It's not, you know, we're not, and, and flood reduction. Uh -huh. We're not going to, you know, in, in a big storm like we had in yeah. August of 2018, we're still going to see flooding. Uh, so but you're, in not, the, you're not diverting the water? Um, we're holding the water. Yes. And, and, and it'll come out at a slower rate, um, but we're also we're also the project will help it flow better. Yeah, Jake, you always seem to have these really interesting projects uh, in mind because uh, the next one, microcells. 
And we've had many conversations, you and I have, in these programs. Um, and I have been paying more attention to those polls and the things hanging on polls. And I know in my community, your, your plan is to come in, as you have been, and educate uh, the residents about what these microcells really are, right. the advantages. And as you have pointed out, if you don't do something now, if you're having problems with uh, reception with uh, uh, mobile phones and so on, it's going to get worse when we have 5G and so on. Right. Uh, nonetheless, what what is what is the vision you have for microcells in the sixth ward? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. This is really education. So, um, you know, neighbors, as we've talked about, neighbors came to me when I was campaigning and, and identified this issue: poor cell service in, in the areas around the Willows Park. Right. Um, so, you know, Crown Castle has been before the the, the board of commissioners. Mm -hmm. They've recently completed um, their data testing. And, uh, you know, they will hopefully be presenting that before the board within the next couple meetings. Yeah. And, um, you know, before that, I'd also like to get together with the residents and just explain the data to them and help them understand. Because as you point out, if, you're, if you feel you have poor cell service now, and, and because, you know, you and I, if we're in the same area, we're pulling off of the same network. Right. That's only going to get worse over the next five years as um, more people are reliant on their on their mobile devices. Yes. 5G comes into play. But, but there is one of those micro towers near the intersection of Newtown Road and Darby Darby Paley Paley. Road. Right. right. But it big pole, gizmo on the top, sure. big brown box hanging on the pole. Am I not benefiting from that? You're you're benefiting from it if you are in line of sight within a thousand feet. Oh, it's more than a thousand feet. Right. So you will not have benefit. Something's working because my service is better. So maybe Verizon well, did something. I'm sure you don't have five bars, but what no, you I don't. but you what you probably are benefiting from is as microcells go up. Um, then if then sure. I'm I'm pulling off of a microcell if yes. I'm on that carrier, and that helps other folks mm -hmm. who are then pulling off of a, of a different mm -hmm. network. So there's some residual benefit. Right. I'm, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we're going to have to see them because, as I as I told you, uh, and I will say now, the prospect of having this big pole with a big brown box hanging off it and going up into the sky is not a happy prospect. We're replacing these uh, uh, the uh, street lights we have now, so and it's got to be a better. And, and that's the other thing that I've I've uh, you know reiter reiterated to neighbors is during this education process. You know, I'm looking for feedback mm -hmm. and, and buy-in, but if neighborhoods don't want this in their mm -hmm. neighborhood I, I, it, I mean it, it doesn't impact me I, I promise that yes. I would bring options to them yes. and if that's not what they're looking for then we'll go back to the drawing board but, but it's still not a solution to the other problem in the Willows Park is, is it so it the, would the, the lack of signals in in the event of an emergency of some kind so two, two issues there if you put a microcell and this is what I've what I've what I come to understand after having discussions with, um, mm -hmm. with, with, with the experts, if you put a microcell in the front of Inverary at that light post as you enter the, the neighborhood, that would cover a good portion of the front of the willows. Um, no, no microcell is going to be able to get back into the woods in right. the wooded area. Um, the emergency component is a separate issue. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't need a, well, the microcell would give 911 capabilities. It so, so regardless of what carrier you use, okay. if you're having uh, an emergency episode yes. and you need to call 911 and you have a and you have a microcell there, you'll have you'll have mm -hmm. the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. um, emergency responders, when they come out to that area, if there's a microcell, would be able to call back. Yes. Um, so they would have that communication interaction. Right. But you don't need a microcell or a cell tower for what the emergency responders are looking for. You need an antenna. And that's mm -hmm. currently at the county level. Uh, they're doing some uh, some engineering to figure mm -hmm. out where best, because as as um, federally mandated, they're going to be going from analog to mm -hmm. digital mm -hmm. um, over the next couple of years. And that's a, that's a huge investment. So right now, I think uh, at the county level, they're trying to figure out where to place the 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 infrastructure yes. to. Um, um, Okay, let's talk about something more pleasant, less controversial. Okay. I, I think maybe less controversial. <laughs> that's rooftop dining and wait. Uh, I, I know none of the details, but what is what is the petition, the proposal that's so, been made? Uh, the Great American Pub came before the board last meeting and um, and proposed rooftop dining at their location. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's something that 
I, I wasn't, you know, I was kind of on the fence with. You know, I was, I was more interested to hear from neighbors and, and how they feel about it. And, and talking with neighbors, um, it seems like there's support for having that type of, uh, you know, dining experience yes. in, in Radnor. Uh, from the business side, it helps the businesses sure. uh, compete with King of Prussia yeah. and, and other locations. And, uh, you know, it offers more spaces. You'll get more people in, hopefully better, more well, revenue. It, yes, uh, however, it will exacerbate an already bad parking problem. Parking will be an issue. Yes. Right, and that's something that we, we will look to have to address. Uh, I, I know what's the latest on alleviating the parking. Somebody just this, during this week, I was in Wayne, and somebody made a comment, it's just horrible trying to park in Wayne. Well, the, is there some plan? It's, it's, it's difficult now to park in Wayne because they're resurfacing the parking areas. Um, so aside a, from that a lot of parking aside areas. Aside from that temporary inconvenience, there's still not enough parking in Wayne. What's the plan? Well, there, is there still talk about putting a garage at the top of the of North Wayne? I think that's been tucked away. But I mean, I've, it, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've heard that plan. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to have that discussion. I, I think it's very interesting and, and you know, would... Um, I, I would think the, uh, there's business, a lot of pros to that. Business Association would be banging the table right. at this point, right. especially as we head into the holiday season. But, but it's something that this board has not discussed. Hmm. All right. No, it should be, because it will be sooner or later. Uh, not long, I, I, I saw something, an email about Commissioner Ayer and Commissioner Nagel and some controversy around that. What is that all about? I, I did read the article in the Philadelphia Inquirer at the uh, sentencing hearing for Ayer, the former Commissioner Ayer, right. and that John Nagel, Commissioner Nagel, had, was there. And at the time when I read the article, I frankly thought to myself, well, it, was, it was very nice of Nagel, who well, I don't know John that well, but it was very nice of Nagel, I thought, to be there, to, I assume, to support the family. Um, because these are awful, awful times for them and will continue to be for a very long time to come. Uh, former Commissioner Ayer is almost lucky that, that he's going to be out of the public eye. Uh, but his family will continue to be for some time. Anyway, what's that issue all about? Well, um, at, at the last meeting, um, you know, a, 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 for, a colleague had brought up the Philadelphia Inquirer article and, and asked Commissioner Nagel to explain his comments. Um, Commissioner Nagel decided not to comment. Um, a comment. There, there, was comment no, there was no comment in the Inquirer article that I read that I can remember. That was attributed to him. Well, there's a statement from Commissioner Nagel that said Commissioner Arr had been treated unfairly. The, the, that error was treated unfairly? Correct. Mm. So, you know, I thought it was appropriate for Commissioner Nagel to explain his comments. Mm -hmm. um, he chose not to. Uh, as a father of four young boys, um, y you know, the, the, the crimes that were committed and that were admitted to and, you know, subsequently received a sentence for Terrible. are just unthinkable. Yes. Um, you know, and, and in my mind, indefensible. Yes. So I was hoping to hear a comment from Commissioner Nagel when, um, when he chose not to. I felt I felt it uh, was necessary to uh, propose a motion to censure Commissioner Nagel for his comments. He refused to explain his comments, or he simply remained silent. Well, he just yeah, he chose not to. He was silent. Yeah. Um, so so I offered a motion to censure, uh, which was defeated on a three-three vote. Um, but I still think it was an important thing to do. Look, as, as commissioners, we're voted and elected, and I think our number one priority is to protect the public. Um, what I think Commissioner Nagel did in this instance and, and in previous um, actions in 2019, keeping Commissioner R as president and face of the township, uh, I th you know, in my mind, they chose to protect the person who preyed on our yes. children. Uh, which is which is uh, on the other hand, contradictory to what we're it, supposed to be it, doing. I certainly don't want to interject myself into this. On the other hand, Nagel, as a private citizen, has the right to have a personal opinion that Air was treated unfairly. I don't know that he was. I have no reason to believe he was. Uh, isn't that his right, right. To, to, even to express that opinion? Not as a commissioner, but as a private citizen. Yeah, I don't know that when we walk out and we're in in, in a public setting, I don't know that when we speak, we speak as private citizens. You know, our words hold weight. Our words matter. Yes. And, and when um, elected officials are, are you know, um, captured making those comments, you know, we were accountable to those words. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it, it certainly is arguable. Uh, what, what's the status then of the motion to censure? Uh, it was it was voted down three three. So it's over. So it, it, in my mind, it's over. Yeah. Um, you know, I hope. You know, and, and I like Commissioner Nagel. We have um, very candid conversations mm -hmm. and, and, and open conversations, and, and we spoke um, after that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, I hope that we'll still be able to communicate, and, and I hope he understands where I was coming from uh, yeah. as a, as an elected official, as a father, and, a father, and sure. as a concerned citizen. Yeah, it's it's just a horrible mess. Anything else you'd like to cover in the time remaining? Nope, I think... Uh, you had well, a busy well, agenda. Yeah, well, I just want residents to know that, um, you know, construction's ongoing in yes. Ward 6. Yes. Um, the parks will be reopened soon, but, uh, you know, we've got a lot of changes coming um, yeah. coming um, in, in the near future. It's certainly not too early to start to uh, remind people that we have an election coming up and the importance of voting. It's a local election, but they're all important. Right, the last day to um, register to vote is Monday. Monday, the, October the 7th. October 7th. Yeah, Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for As having always, me. Jake, this has been another in the series of Commissioner's Corner, a special program, a series of programs produced by Radio Studio 21. Until next time, take very good care of yourselves.